Lee Tusman is a New York-based new media artist, educator, and organizer of Baby Castles, a New York-based collective fostering and amplifying diverse voices in video game culture. Please take it away, Lee. Cool. Hey, thanks so much. Um, uh, thanks for having me here. I feel like um, like Phoenix when you're just saying like, yeah, this is like a like a punk space online. I'm, I'm I don't remember how you phrase it. Like this is the punk rock, right? That's totally that's what my talk is about. And I just I just wanted to say. I just wanted to say a little bit too, like um, I, I'm coming to you um, as myself. I'm coming to you as in like an emissary from Baby Castles. I'm also coming, you know, which I have up on my slides in front of me, which you can see. Oh, I'm also watching myself on stream. I'm the flying um, man eating, person eating a uh, plant here too. But so um, I'm coming to you as an emissary from Baby Castles where I'm one of the co-organizers. There's over a dozen of us that are meows that help organize that space, which is a DIY collective space, and we exist, you know, we exist in person, right? You can come to visit us on 14th in Manhattan near Union Square, and we've been going on for, um, you know, a decade, right? But we're also, like the rest of you, having to kind of alter what we do and live online and think of how do we extend our space, which is a DIY arts community with a huge thriving community of people, how do we, like, turn that into not just turn that into like, how do we live online? Right. And, and this is true even before, um, COVID-19, but it's, it's accelerated dramatically. And, um, I'm going to talk about baby castles and other DIY spaces as well. I've also been a part of little Berlin in Philadelphia, um, a, a, a super cool space in a warehouse in North Philly. Um, that's been going on also over a decade. I've been part of flux factory in Queens. Um, in other places I'm going to talk about a little bit too. Right now you're seeing um, hopefully my slides from an earlier incarnation of Baby Castles just to give a feel. Can I point out one thing? Like, yeah, here we have a bear in the center and the guts have been pulled out and, you know, there's a, a laptop that's duct taped in with blue duct tape and you have our two arcade cabinets if you visit our space. Look to the right, look down a little bit. There's the extension cord, right? Pay attention to the extension cords because that's our... That's our like placeholder to understand if we're in a DIY space, sort of, you know, I'm, I'm just making that up now on the spot, but like, think about those extension cords a lot today. Okay. Um, Baby Castles, Mess Life's three years old. Um, I created it with the help of John Bruno, who's here and involved today, and many other people. And it's more like a DIY loft, like almost like um, I live in an apartment and then once a month I let people come in to do like a experimental, um, events, right? Or salon, um, or like West Philly basement shows. I'm from Philly, by the way. So that's my, my references sometimes. Uh, here's an early photo of baby castles. If you do a internet search for us, you'll find, right? This is to give to, I'm going to throw some contrast up between kind of online virtuals, online spaces and how those could be, um, DIY spaces can exist. Does that does that metaphor or framework of thinking of an online DIY space, um, especially in the context of game engines, does that work? I'm going to try to show some of these things. I also want to point out, maybe we'll zoom out after I close my slides, hopefully later. Like I I brought some um um my Wunderkammer, my uh my my uh little mini museum or archive. I've brought some uh, representations of those spaces around me on the stage and on the floor. I don't think you can see it right now, but in a little bit, I brought some dumpsters, some pallets, some paint, uh, trash, skateboards, so some other things that I've collected over the years. And I want to talk a little bit about the aesthetics of clutter. This is Mess Life again, the online virtual 3D warehouse collaborative art space um, that I built with from John and other people. Castles, and I'm trying to yeah think about the mess, the cables that I pointed out earlier. They're holding things. Uh, the effluence, the ephemera, the junk. The picture over in the corner. Arcade cabinets and computers. Sticks. Thinking of the precarity of these spaces, I originally made Mess Life 2017, and that was long, maybe a year after the ghost ship. I believe that was a year. 
um, tragedy. And, and in the wake of that, thinking about how all kinds of DIY spaces were, were facing huge, um, always have, because DIY spaces exist in precarity. Did by neighbors, they're affected by gentrification, they're affected by, um, and so DIY, you know, the community around them, which, which is great and is why they, they exist because of the community of people that has happened. This is a photo from outside of Little Berlin. This was a, a vacant lot that Little Berlin created a sculpture garden in. This vacant lot is no more. A developer took this land and built um, three and four hundred thousand dollar, you know, McMansions on this spot. I know in New York that might sound crazy or in England, but maybe twice as much as the as the apartments or houses that were all around this area. In, ba ba in back is the giant warehouse. Um, Little Berlin was on the ground floor of that life. And I'm, again, I'm trying to show some of the, the clutter, some of the feeling of the aesthetics of these spaces, because I actually think aesthetics are one part of what makes a DIY space, even if I find it hard to define. Who maybe can come together. This is mess life, but inside of the new white in LA. And these are people sitting on cushions and um, things in, in mess life. Earlier incarnation of baby castles, which has had, had to move relating to precarity and gentrification and other issues at least at least three times, I think maybe closer to five times in our past 10 years. Mess life, forming at baby castles in our last location, Aaron Bartol's work, Lynn, and then again, using the vacant lot as a pop-up space for us all to have community and working together. Right, and have some presence together. Look like in virtual space. How do we feel that presence? How do we feel the sense of community and shared space when we're online? And that can be a part of um, that can be a part of some of these other places. This life here, of course, I needed the kind of industrial area for us to feel comfortable, right? Which we're, many of us are so used to, particularly in, I think in the United States, but in other countries as well. This is where you can feel comfortable. And I'm thinking in contrast to Second Life, you know, oh, my slides are backwards. That's fine. Um, land for sale. And it basically looks like recreations of um, that are for sale in the United States and other countries, like, you know, land speculation. You can buy these things for sale in virtual space. This is not a DIY space. And in many ways, Second Life, we might think of it as a DIY space at times because you can you can do lots of things and create within it just like minecraft but you're you know still a corporation that runs the space it's not a nonprofit. it's not a small community of 50 friends 150 friends and their friends and their friends of friends of friends of friends on people's couches when they come into town to perform for the night that's just not what second life is minecraft you know there's things for sale Right um, at, at Baby Castles, there's not much for sale. Maybe a band has performed in there. They have some albums for you. Um, maybe you've gotten some other cool merch um, store too. But shout out is these other kinds of commercial DIY uh, attempts at making DIY spaces. Maybe they're not even really attempting that. But these other kinds of spaces, they're, they're not they're not the same, right? Uh, for one thing, they're missing the dumpsters. You know, like every DIY space has its dumpsters out back. The dumpsters are so important. This is where you go and you find your materials for, for making things together, right? Like you can't make sculptures, you can't have a performance, you know, your concert. Um, you can't even have like, you know, a dinner without going to the dumpster and finding like your materials. Without that, you know, again, this. This, this is essential, right? So online DIY virtual art spaces, they need their dumpsters. Is your world of text feeling of presence here since everyone writes in the space. I don't necessarily recommend this engine. I've had some problems with it because of um, certain kinds of anonymity in that space allows for, um, it allows for an audience that's so huge with no accountability. They don't know each other. It's not like, again, 50 or 100 or 150 people. It's thousands or tens of thousands of people. And so I've seen homophobia, racism, transphobia, all kinds of in that kind of a space because it's not a small 
shared collective DIY space, right? It's like, this is the feeling of being in a room with a bunch of other people making a mess. Habitat started in the 80s, if you can believe it. I think this is, this is Neo Habitat. I'm the bald man on the right. I'm actually bald right now, sitting and talking to you here in my space in Brooklyn. And then virtually I'm a plant, which is bald as well. Um, the A's, this is from the 90s maybe, but this is Neo Habitat, a, a recent incarnation. This to me feels like a kind of a DIY space. I'm not gonna get into the whole history of, it is something to pay attention to. Be attempting to buy a new head. You change your avatar and your avatar, your name, these are ways of feeling connected identity in virtual space, obviously, right? So here you buy a new head and put that head on top of yourself. Model, I think we should all think about that. On the left, you'll see someone walking around holding like a chicken head that they were attempting to get on top of their torso. That's like, here's a warehouse. This is the center of the space. On the right is the shared image bank. If you can see in my slides, anyone can upload a photo any 2D image and you can throw it into the space and start building with it. Um, you can use anyone else's image because images aren't owned by anyone individually. Again, it's collective. And those images can be thrown on the floor. They can be used to build 3D spaces. Kind of, there's also little spaces. There's like these nooks. Nooks are really important. I, mean, I think we know this outside of DIY spaces, but definitely in DIY spaces, these little comfortable corners that you can make your own. You can put your artwork in or, or curl up in the corner. I uh, fork of Like Like by Paolo Pedercini. I made a version called New Directions Arcade for my students at Purchase College where I teach. And this is maybe 20, 30, 40 of us one night. I think maybe up to 50 of us were in the space, um, playing video games, hanging out, dancing, talking, sharing that space together. Again, scale is really important in these kinds of spaces where we're thinking about what a DIY virtual space, space might be. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't think the, um, I don't think it matters if it's 2D or 3D. There's ways of, there's ways of making this feel happen in different kinds of spaces, but there's something about scale that is really important. Ramp, skateboard ramps are really important too. In Mess Life is a sky view, the warehouse is in the center, we're looking down. This is just a frozen flash in time, but the floor is made up of the, uh, am I saying this word right? The effluvia of everyone's um, resources. Everyone put images into the space and the floors is constantly shifting, almost like a battleground of all of these images that are underneath us all. Because when I'm walking around DIY spaces, they're made up of the accretions of all of the past residents and artists and performers and scientists and sewing and duct taping wallets of these spaces moment in time of mess life of the collective things a quilt in the front a cool dog well, i wanted to say about um shared resources virtual diy space this is my information you can find me online we're in this together awesome oh my god you gave me such feels i barely like got through your talk i'm like all nostalgic for new york now um that was fantastic i miss baby castles you guys uh you all are doing the best work uh um yeah first off baby castles definitely also misses all of you um we're excited to be a physical venue again um question uh coming over here from twitch um is how do you see these virtual diy spaces intersecting with individual physical practices where actually we hosted event inside mess life inside an actual space so here's one of them this is mess life being projected um, with um, my friend Chuang sitting on some cushions drinking a beer using a keyboard station where I DJed or maybe other people were DJing and again hanging out making stuff in the space so there are times when these can come together I'm also thinking about how I think it was dump FM shout out to dump FM had a meetup at 319 Shoals in New York. That might have been about a decade ago. Um, about like, yeah, how, what, how do you turn this into like being between physical and these virtual extensions? And I, I don't have a great rep I don't have a great answer necessarily because sometimes what's nice is we're all like baby castles. We're now scattered all over the country, but we hang out in a Discord, right? And we do come together in these kinds of events like this. 
there's um, ways that kind of people can meet up in these virtual spaces sometimes turn into physical things where people meet each other. You know, think of becoming friends with someone on Twitter. Definitely when you have like a virtual DIY space, it might be the other way around where you've met through, through some kind of other online or physical that turns into a virtual version of a DIY space. So I think we're in early eras of this and we'll see, we'll see things go back and forth between these two realms. One interesting thing about uh, IRL spaces is like, while they're based on a community, there's always the ability for like random people uh, to show up in an event just because they like saw it online or they saw it on the street and they were curious. Um, and, and that tends to work really well as a way to bring people into the community but online in the sort of small rooms and spaces that I've been inhabiting, sort of like you were talking about, um, when uh, random people come in, often they are just coming in as trolls or to kind of like start something and then leave. And maybe some of that is due to like the anonymity of online. So I guess, do you see a way for online to replicate the ability for just new people outside of the community to get involved with the community in this like spatial uh, embodied way. And may, that's a really good point. Thank you for bringing that up. And and I don't I don't necessarily I'm not an expert, right? We all I think we're all can try to answer this in different ways. You know, this is this comes back to why I had mentioned your world of text, where I jumped into the Discord chat and said, hey, someone's writing racist thoughts on here. Is there a moderator that can remove this? And there didn't seem to be anyone that could kind of like deal with that. And you're kind of bringing up the opposite problem. We actually have these kind of spaces that are really intentional and that we really have care for each other, allow new people in, but still maintain kind of issues of, of safety or protection or mutual care. Um, I, unfortunately, some of that's really technical. I mean, you can't just have, you know, having codes of conduct and other things are important. But if you don't have some way to actually maintain that space, like if we were at baby castles and someone came in and did something, said something, you know, and this has happened, right? If someone has violated, you know, essentially our rules for the space of how we want people to be in there, we as organizers would take action together, right? And so there needs to be, we would, we would get that person. First of all, that person would be removed. We would also probably have a photo or some way to identify them, find out what the situation was and not let them back in. There has to be some similar kinds of ways that you that you set up when making these spaces to have similar kinds of. That's that's my personal feeling. So one of the things that I think is really interesting about DIY spaces is like so you mentioned a bunch of communities that I've either been you know a part of or have helped get going. I, I feel like these spaces, particularly in New York, subcultures self-select. So there's this kind of word of mouth thing. You only know about a thing if you know somebody else who knows about it or you go to the cool record shop or, you know, and is like kind of happening online, but also not because the tools like Twitter and stuff that we are trying to use to do this kind of thing were never built for us. They were built for massive right. corporations. It's a, I mean, that's partly why I built a space, you know, because it was at first I was like, can we have a squat in Minecraft? Can we have a squat in Second Life? And you can, you totally can, but I couldn't, I couldn't figure out a way that, that had the, the different things that I was looking for in that space, which is why I was like, you know, let mention one thing that, um, um, in the chat. And he mentioned um, something I just wanted him to say here, which is that one solution for the problem of um, trolls entering new, you know, as new users entering a space is to build an invite tree where you only enter the online space if someone invites you. And that that's been used in some form. So like I would invite a friend and Max would invite a friend. And, and so we kind of grow our friend community. One of the things that work that works in a, in a physical space too, at baby castles will have a performance night and some will organize that night and they've organized and invited people to perform and those people bring their communities and that's how it grows. And so that's a, that is a really good model, I think, for virtual spaces. And to find out, you know, maybe to answer what you were just talking about, Phoenix, to answer how to bring in new kinds of people, it's, tr it's to make sure to be intentional with inviting lots of different kinds of people and finding how the space and the community can serve them as well, not just you as the person that's built the space or an organizer of the space. 
what kinds of services, you know, in a, in a, maybe a, how, what, what can you do to, to provide the, a, a community for them as well? Yeah, I just, yeah, I thought it was really interesting um, that you pointed out, I think it was Phoenix, but I'm facing the stage, so I didn't see you speaking, just that most online information sharing platforms are designed to reach the broadest audience possible, just as a default. Um, and with talking to, we were talking to like the Electronic Frontier Alliance recently, and they were like, oh, you know, we can um, signal blast events of yours, but if you're trying to curate like a specific audience, like if you're trying to create a space that's for this type of artist, then like maybe don't get signal blasted because like, um, you know, you have to sort of think about like what kind of space that you're creating carefully. And there aren't really any um, tools online that are designed for that. So I just, yeah, I thought that was interesting that you pointed that out and wanted to sort of re-up that. 